Well, hello everyone, my name is Wego and welcome back to another video. This week, we're going to be jumping right into another Pokemon Fusion ROM hack because we absolutely love those here on the channel. And it's not Pokemon Fuse Dimensions, this time it's going to be Pokemon Fusion 3. This game actually has, in my opinion, better fusions than Fuse Generations. It doesn't really have the physical special split though, so that is one thing it's lacking. But the rest of this game is absolutely amazing. Before we jump into the video, let me know what your favorite fusion fusion Pokemon in this video was. I personally really love this Pumpkaboo and Hydragon Fusion. It just looks like something straight out of Halloween. Also only about 27% of the people that watch my videos are subscribed, so if you haven't done that already and you're enjoying the content, please do. And there is also actually Pokemon Fusion 1 and 2, so if you guys want to see videos on those games as well, let's try to go crazy and smash 10,000 likes to make that happen. Oh, and I almost forgot, this is also a hardcore Nuzlocke, so here are the rules for that. And let's just jump right into Pokemon Fusion 3. Professor Birch greets us with a Pokemon that could come straight out of Skyrim. And he doesn't really seem too happy about its own appearance either. I name myself Zwiggo, head on over to our house and see that there is actually custom sprites in this game. For like, Pokemon running around in the overworld. I have no idea what these guys are gonna be, but I can't wait to find out. Once we come outside, we see that Professor Birch is getting chased off by what looks like a spritzy, stunky fusion. And he then points us to his back to pick our starter fusion Pokemon, starting off with a Mudkip Froakie Fusion, a Torchic Fennekin Fusion, and finally a Trico Rowlet Fusion. And this thing looks so good that I almost picked it, but I knew I had to go with my boy Swampert, because Greninja Swampert is going to look great as well. So once I made my decision, I decided to help out the professor and then name my Mudkip Froakie Jack. Because I feel like because he turned kind of in like a ninja samurai thing, I should name him after Samurai Jack. We then show Mei that we actually picked the good starter by beating up her Treelant with tackles from Jack and her Pooch Dower with a bubble. Once that's done, we go back to the lab to get ourselves some balls. This means that we can finally start capturing Pokemon and actually start the Nuzlocke. I start off by finding Kiwi the Tayflit, which is a fusion of... Talo and Rufflet. Also found a Pooch Dower whose typing is basically the same as a regular Houndoom. He just looks a bit cooler. Also captured that thing that Professor Oak was running away from and named it Stink. And then I saw Wally finding a Giptyke. One of the coolest things in this game. Sadly enough, I won't be able to get one because I already got my encounter for this route. But on the next route, I got a Catian, which is a fusion of Finian and Caterpie, a water bug type. After we give it the name Looney, we go to the forest to capture a shroomish fungus fusion. And I mean, don't tell me he doesn't look like Toad. And finally, we got a Maripede, but I'm not gonna lie, I didn't use this thing. That was our last capture for now, so let's go to the first gym leader, Roxanne, who's still going to have rock types. We just don't know what they're gonna look like. But let's rock her world by defeating all of them. She has two Tyrants, who are really easy for me to take down with Water Pulse. And god do I wish I had these as my encounters. But her ace was a Spireep, which was a Spirit Tomb Lilip Fusion, also really, really cool. But since it loses his grass typing for Ghost, we also easily take it out with Water Pulse. Once the gym was done, Jack evolved into Frog Stomp, but it doesn't have the ground typing, it just stays pure water. We then chased after a pirate, and as we can see, he has like a Weedle Balloon thing, who's meant to represent Pico. So once we get him back, we actually get another encounter in this cave, and it's the best Pokemon in the entire ROM hack history, Wood Doof. Yes, it's a Bidoof Wooper Fusion. What more can you ask for? I will give Game Freak all of my money to actually make this a Pokemon. So once we give it the appropriate name of a creator of all living beings, we then run into May again. God took out his bird with a couple of headbutts because that's all he needs. But since I don't really want to lose my god straight away, once he brings out Treeflit, I bring out my dog and burn that thing. Once the battle is over, we can head on over to Mr. Briny's house, but his boat isn't two fused boats together, which I'm really disappointed about. But I do allow him to bring us to Dufer Town, where we pick up the old rod and capture a Bosque Washi. And in the Granite Cave, I also capture another Pokemon, a Yamask Meditite Fusion. And she looks uh, pretty damn menacing. I wanted to name her Ang, but it's become Ah instead. But let's just ignore that. 
deliver our letter to Steven and head on over to the second gym. You might think fighting types, pretty easy because I have a Tayflet. And well, while the first Pokemon Mien did went down very very quickly with a single wing attack, his next Pokemon, Hawolga, is an electric fighting type, which means I can't stay in here with Kiwi. I went into Jack and he hit a mud shot which basically did like no damage on it. So I decided to go into Toad after that because I took way too much damage from Karate Chops. I put a Leech Seed on him, got out of there again and sent out Ah. She was able to hit a Nightshade and a Confusion but two gusts brought me down into red health again and forced me to swap out. I didn't really have too many Pokemon left so I decided to bring in Kiwi again, wing attack it not do enough damage and get out of there again. And then brought in Tomb and he was not able to do anything because he got paralyzed and stuck in paralysis, so I brought in my last hope, Looney. He was able to get it back down into red health with water pulses, but then I was stuck in a dilemma because I had to swap out again and sack somebody. Since Baskuwashi wasn't really pulling his weight in this battle, I decided to bring him in and let him go down to a Thundershock. I then brought in Kiwi again who avenged his fallen comrade with a quick attack and finally took down that horrible fusion. He still had one more Medimask, but two wing attacks took care of that, and that means we have two gym badges, but also lost a valuable team member that's not even valuable, actually. Just because I wanted to know what it turned into, this is the evolution of my Baskuwashi. And now I kinda regret sacking it. And then while I was making my way through all the trainers on the beach in Slateport City, I got myself a Batinian, but God also evolved into his final form, Quagrel. And this has got to be one of the most derpiest Pokemon ever. If you guys want to see a solo run with just this thing or its pre-evolution, I'd definitely be down to do that. On the route where we normally meet May, we get a Corsola Tangela fusion, but not the regular water rock type Corsola, it's actually the Galarian one, so this is a ghost grass type. So he starts off with a Tailabi, who I take down with Jack's water pulses, but then she goes into her Grotix, and I'm pretty sure this is just a grass a flying type just like Dartrix, but I'm not staying in here, I'm going to my Pooch Dower. An Ember isn't even enough to do half, and a Wing Attack does a lot more than I thought it was gonna do. So my dog has got to be switched out for my bird. Kiwi was able to take two Wing Attacks, a hit back, and then finish it off with Quick Attack. And her final Pokemon kinda surprised me, a Hounder Carcoal Fusion. Looks really cool and I'm guessing it's a Ghost Rock or Ghost Fire type. So I went back into Jack, Water Pulsed it, and that's the rival battle out of the way. My Pooch Dower then evolved into a Might Doom, and no I'm not talking about the video game. But once that was done, we met up with Watson. I'm of course going to be leading off the fight with a ground type, and who's better than God? But Watson also leads with a ground type of his own, Mudzol. I do manage to take it out with two mud shots, but then he brings in a Plusle Electrode Fusion. I knew this thing was going to use something like self-destruct or explosion because there's no way the creator of this ROM would make an electrode fusion without that. So I go into Og who is part ghost type and can definitely just negate that explosion and that's exactly what happens. Finally he has a Skull for Dose which is an Scolipede Ampharos fusion so poison electric which is 4 times weak to much shot from my god and he gets one shot. The last Pokemon is a Drampound, and it's a Dragon Electric type, so this is pretty dangerous. I first get hit with a Dragon Breath, and then I hit it back with a Mud Shot. I know I can't take another one. I know I lowered its speed with Mud Shot, but I don't think I can outspeed yet, so I decide to swap out. I'm bringing Corsola. I try to go for a Leech Seed, but two Dragon Breaths, sadly enough, take me out. The only way he took me out was because the second one was a higher roll than the first one, but I'm really not too bummed about losing this thing because I didn't like it anyway. I went into Toad instead and then put a Leech Seed on him, and once that was done I brought in Sancho by my Doom and bit him twice, and together with the Leech Seed damage that was enough to take him down. Three Gym Badges acquired and two deaths. Let's hope we don't wreck up anymore. Just under the fiery path, we find ourselves a Rogvana, which is another thing that is like in the top 10 fusion Pokemon of this game in my opinion. It's a Rock Dart type, so definitely not bad. In the fiery path, we capture a Miendit, a fighting poison type. Toad then also finally evolved into a Moonlum, and I'm not gonna lie, this thing looks better than I thought it was gonna look. We then get an Azuji, which we're probably not gonna use too much. And finally, a Lunasir in Meteor Falls, 
He doesn't carry the Psychic type but instead gets the Rock Buck type. And Pinsir already being strong with what it is, I'm pretty sure this thing is gonna be a beast. Oh yeah, and I forgot one more Pokemon, Sand Xu. An Ice Dragon type, so it's basically Kieran but just a little bit less good. And I named him Speed Sonic after Speed is Sand Sonic from One Punch Man. Once we're done adding everybody to our team and catching them up with the rest of them, I went on over to the Volcano to take on Maxi. He has a My Doom of his own, but my Moomans Brick Breaks easily take care of it. A Camera Crustal Fusion comes out next, named Castle, pretty appropriate. So I decide to bring in Jack and hit two Water Pulses to take it down, but we also got hit with a Signal Beam and a Magnitude, and if that Magnitude was any higher, Jack might have died. So we got pretty lucky on that one. Last up was another Tail of Bee, which we easily took out with God's Headbutts again. I do think it's kind of weird that there's two Tail of Fusions though, and I don't know if there's another Pokemon that gets used twice. But the makers of this game might just really like Tail of. Or Swellow. On our hike down from Mount Chimney, we found a Ponyty, which is going to turn out as a Ponyta Rookity Fusion. Pretty damn cool, hopefully it evolves into something even cooler. But first we evolve Bubs into Marilotto because we might need it since the next gym leader is a fire type user. But funnily enough, I didn't really go into the battle with a water type. I actually went in with my rock buck type, Moo Man. First taking out Dwemel with a single rock throw and then also destroying his next Pokemon, Excaheed, which I thought was going to be a steel type. Luckily I was right, it wasn't ground type. And with a single brick break, we took it out. Darupon was up next a normal fire type, so another brick break took care of it again. And last, and also least, was also a castle, which we took down with another rock throw, critical hit this time. That's four gym badges acquired, and there is not much to do between the fourth and the fifth, except for going into the desert where we capture a Larvitar Larvesta fusion in the Mirage Tower, and in the desert itself, we capture a Heat Burr. We also grab the Claw Fossil and do a bunch of evolutions. That way we got ourselves a Lycorpedo, a Sand Xur, and a Pupa Star. With that new fossil we just acquired, we also got an Anubuto, which is just a Rock Buck type. So a reskin of our Maldo. They should have really made it Water Bug because that's what both of the regular Pokemon look like. But hey, we can't get everything we want. And once that was all done, we went on over to Norman to also destroy him. That's what you get when you don't give any attention to your kids. He starts off with God, so I thought, yeah, this fight's doomed, we're gonna lose immediately. But luckily, I managed to Swords Dance up with my Moo Man and then Brick Break it to take it out already. Next up was a Lick Coach, <laughs> so we also took that now with Brick Break, and then Lick Cash was next. And one, two, three Brick Breaks later, and it's down. Last up was a Furrowed, and I didn't want Pinsir to just solo this gym, so I just swapped out into Goth Moth. And with a bunch of Signal Beams and Flame Wheels, we finally managed to win against our dad. A pretty swift and easy battle. I don't think I'm going to use this Pinsir Fusion for that much anymore because he's pretty overpowered. Once we acquire that Gym Badge, we also get the HM for Surf, which means that we can capture some more Water Pokemon, starting off with a Horsey Scrub Fusion, and then another really clean designed Clouncher Krabby Fusion. And his name is Mr. Krabs, but in Dutch, Meneer Krabs. But I couldn't fit the S, so it's just Meneer Krabs. And I decided to just immediately evolve it into Kingzer, and I'm not gonna lie, this is in my top 3 favorite fusions of this game. It also just kind of reminds me of that Crab and Elden Ring. In New Malville, we got our first electric type, Mudzle. Since we named it Hearse, we surfed to the next round and captured a few more Pokemon. Starting out with a Furrowed and then also getting a Rosewile. A Steel Grass type that could definitely come in handy later because it's just a really nice typing with not a lot of weaknesses. That's all the encounters we get for now so let's head on over to the Weather Institute and once we change Team Aqua out of there we get ourselves a gift Pokemon. I was really excited to see who it was going to be and it's just regular cast form. Like, just get out of here, what are you even doing in this game? The only thing it's useful for is the mystic water that I'm going to give to my water types. So I just deleted it off the planet Earth. I then evolved my hearse into Mudstrika. But this is a physical attacker and electric type moves are special, so it's not that useful. 
I still use it to take out Maze Hunter in the next rival fight with a couple of sparks. The next Pokemon is Steeny, who is a grass poison type. And for some reason I wasn't really thinking, so I went for double kick and I got hit with a razor leaf and a poison point, which left me with 1 HP in the end. So we just got this thing and almost lost it already. Luckily I just switched out the next turn into Sonic who could just powder snow it the turn after to take it down. And also take care of Grotix with two powder snows as well. Since his leaf blades were barely doing any damage because of my dragon typing. We get the HM for fly but before we can use it we have to beat up this playing girl. No not this one, this one. Before we do that we capture a Chameleon and a Nasal and immediately evolve it into a Zavile. And since it's part Ice type, it might be really useful against the next gym leader. Let's see and find out if it is. First, starting off with Grunch against her Pony D. One Rock Slide and it's down since it's Fire Flying type. And I don't think this tiny little thing is going to take a 4 times super effective move. Mario Lotto also couldn't take a Rock Slide. As a Jot, surprisingly survived one and hit back with a Bubble Bean getting me down into red health. I knew another one was going to kill so I went for another one, but of course she heals up. I then get a free turn and take her out. She then has a, a Lapras Flapple Fusion named Lapple, so I go into my Zatu Weavile Fusion and try to take it out with an Ice Beam. Yeah, it's not really having any of that as it paralyzes me, which means I'm not going to be able to attack. So I go into Meneer Krab and stomp it twice, but then I get confused and I don't really want my Meneer Krab to go down. So I go into Speed Sonic, but it went for Dragon Breath, doing a lot of damage to me. Luckily, we managed to outspeed the turn after and take it out with Dragon Claw. The last Pokemon was an Unphilux, so I went into my starter and I got frozen by an Ice Beam turn 1, which means I have to get out of there immediately. First paralyzed, now frozen, this battle is not really going in my favor. Luckily, we still have Meneer Krab, who can stomp stomp and surf it, which means it's down and out and we get our 6th gym badge and the ability to fly. We also evolve Sally into Mienlays and ah into Kofa Cham. But then also get a Perxio who finally gets his real typing, the Dark Electric type. And Jack finally reaches his final evolution as Swamp Ninja. I'm sorry but can he get even better than this? I don't think so. With all of these new additions to the team, we went to Lilicove City and challenged Mei for the final time. She actually eats off with the other evolution of the Lapras that we saw earlier, Lappleton this time. And so I went for the fake out sludge bomb combo and that immediately defeated it. And then he brings in Azujot. I went for another sludge bomb because I thought, this thing can't one shot me. And then it went for the wing attack. And it probably has huge power because otherwise this would not have killed me. So yeah, Rip Sally, you have only been here for one battle. So Grunch comes in, rock slides that Azujad and sends it back to the Shadow Realm where it comes from. We then get to see the final evolution of her starter Pokemon and I am really happy I went with Swamp Ninja because this thing looks not that great. So my little fire horse Rook took it out with a couple of drill picks. Her last Pokemon is Honkol again and with a surf from Jack we win this battle and send Mei off to a journey of not doing anything anymore. Shortly after we evolved Milo into Luxbard, captured a Scratoomp, we get the Magma Emblem from this old lady, don't know what she's doing with it. But when we get this Magma Emblem, we actually get a Darupalm next. A fire type, Magma Emblem, must be connected somehow. And once we reach the Magma Hideout, we also get a Honkol, a Pokemon that I really wanted to use, so I'm definitely happy with it. At the end of the cavern, we do find Maxi, who's talking to a Groudon, but it doesn't look normal. It's kind of a pink ground on, which means he's probably fused with Palkia, and this is what his actual sprite looks like. I know, amazing. Sadly enough, we can't get it until the post game, so we're not gonna use it. They didn't change the blue orb into a pink orb, which I'm pretty disappointed about. But hey, we're gonna have to roll with it and challenge Maxi right after Groudon shoots off into space. Get it? Because Palkia is actually like the god of space. Maxi here starts off with a Might Doom, and I decide to lead with Jack. One serve and that my doom is no more, and he brings in Gengosol. And with Jack's serve, we can also easily one-shot it. The last Pokemon he has is Castle, which means his entire team is weak to water types, and Jack easily cleans it up with one more tidal wave. Once Maxi is defeated, we can go to the Team Aqua Hideout, but before we get there, we evolve Rook into Rapinite, and it kinda reminds me of like this demon horse. 
that you see in like most MMOs, but still a really cool Pokemon and a really fun typing with Steel Fire. Team Aqua finally embraces their name by jumping into the water, so hopefully we won't have to see them again. And we then do a couple more evolutions, so we get ourselves a Darambipom and our very own Gengossel. And I swear this is not a joke, we also got ourselves our very own Swery. We then eventually reach Archie's room where we normally have to fight Electrodes who come out of Pokeballs, but here it's a Mud Striker. Don't really get the resemblance, but hey, let's just leave it alone, grab our Master Ball and get out of here. And so the next thing we find is on the water and it's a Driftmer, which is the thing that Mr. Briny actually had. It's not a Weedle at all, it's this. And it looks amazing. Once we capture it, we name it Blimpo. We then head on over to the Shoal Cave to get our Sphibur. A nice fighting ice type. Let's hope it doesn't step in the footsteps of Crabomitable though, because that thing is not loved by a lot of people. We also get Skarmir and then do a couple of evolutions before we take on Tate and Liza, like Zephyr into Screvenant and Blimpo into Driftlord. I do really, really like this. I definitely feel like this could be an actual Pokemon. I'm not gonna lie, most of the Pokemon in this ROM hack can definitely be Pokemon, but this, it just takes the cake. But once that is done, we finally head on over to Tate and Liza. And they have Xavile and Lunasir as their first Pokemon, so I lead off with Rook and Stokel. I go for an Iron Tail Fire Punch combo on their Lunasir and take them out first turn. They then bring in a Soul Cross, so I swap out Rook, go into Blimpo, and hit two Shadow Punches with Stokel on Soul Cross, and then take it out with Water Pulse from Blimpo. They then bring out Shandacross, and I know a bunch of you are going to love this Pokemon. And so I decide to swap out Blimpo for Ah. Both of my Pokemon get hit pretty hard the next turn, so I swap both of them out for Jack and Milo. I try to go for the Surf and the Crunch, but both of my Pokemon get confused and Jack doesn't hit the Surf. But then the turn after that, I do hit my Surf and take both of them out to win my 7 Gym Batch. And we all know what that means, let's go and take on Team Magma at the Space Center. As always, Steven is going to be able to help us here, but I don't think we're going to need his help that much. And with Jack by our side, we can just Tidal Wave and Tidal Wave and Tidal Wave all over again to flood their entire team. I also got myself an arm of boot tops, and in the seafloor cavern I capture a Heliard, but sadly enough it's a normal steel type. Would have been way better if it was electric type. But first, let's go take a look at the weird looking Kyogre at the end of the cave. Before this Kyogre also decides to shoot a hole in the wall, we first take on our favorite pirate. Sam took out my doom and Lycanpedo with ancient powers, metal claws and water pulses, but then he has a Walkader. Pretty much a monstrosity, just like Crabominable. So I swap into Stokel and just fire punch it a couple of times to take it out as well. But it did have a super effective rock slide that did bring me down into orange health, but nothing we should worry about. It's then finally time for Kyogre to shine, so let's see what he looks like in this game. Definitely not as cool as the Palkia Groudon fusion, but still a very menacing design. Before we head on over to Suthupolis City, we see a Relicant that's been taken over by a Delmise. So we add that to the club, and we then see the two boys in all their glory. And since we're a good uncle, we're going to have to get their dad to make them stop fighting. But first we go through the Cave of Origin, where we capture a Dankaboo, and in the Sky Pillar itself, we capture a Spear Reap. And at the top of the Spear Pillar is the coolest legendary that you've probably ever seen, the Rayquaza Giratina Fusion. They first turn back into their regular forms, but after Rayquaza is done shouting at them, they turn back into their fusions and retreat to somewhere unknown. Before we take on the final gym leader, I did one more evolution, Nasmore into Hellisharp. And then it's time to take on number one, Juan. First up, he starts off with a Giptite, but I have Tony, not the Tiger, but the Walrein, and he's going to rock slide that thing twice to take it out. For Licky Cash, I swapped out into Zephyr and Giga Drained it twice. Her King Algae is a pretty annoying Pokemon to deal with, so I'd swap out into Lauren, Giga Drain that thing a couple of times, as well as use a couple of Petal Dances. Then I go into Tony to weaken it even more, but then Tony almost dies, so I go back into Lauren. And finally finish it off with one last Giga Drain. His Kingster was no problem, as two more Giga Drains also take care of that. And he actually has a Swamp Ninja of his own, so I decide to go into Cal 
And with only a single leaf blade, it doesn't take him out. But he goes for takedown and that recoil damage gives us the win. And I know that I'm not going to be able to use this because it's a legendary, but I still go back to Sky Pillar after that and capture Raytina in a Master Ball. And I do have to say, amazing job on the sprite work on this one. Let's hope that one day Game Freak will also make a fusion game. But before we wait 35 years for them to do that, let's first go to Victory Road to take on Wally. -E. And of course, there's not taking on a new trainer unless we get some new Pokemon. So let's get ourselves a Pump Draw a hack slash and then also capture a caratini and in victory road itself we found an aura queen who uh, don't really know what i must think about this and we also immediately evolve our newly found Rutini into Karanair. Surprisingly, Wally here has a Karanair of his own, but we have Speed Sonic, who's going to just Dragon Claw through it. For Rosewile, I went to the Goth mod and just Flame Wheeled it. Then it was Starter versus Starter, and I do have to say, I definitely picked the best one out of the three as I can just serve this Delzikin and send it back to KFC. He then has a Galvern, and I thought this was going to be a part Dragon type, so I send out Speed Sonic. As it turns out, it's not, as my Dragon Claw doesn't even do as much as I thought it was gonna do. And on top of that, I get paralyzed and I don't hit him for the next two turns, which is going to cause me to swap out. Which means it's finally time for Pump Drought to shine, as he manages to take it out with a couple of body slams. The last Pokemon on his team is Furroat, so I bring in Derman and Mega Hornet once as I'm a Dragon Bug type and take it down. Now it's time to take on the league, but before we do that, it's time to craft our final team. Getting ourselves a Gao Dragon, an Eskin Knight, and last but not least, Volcanitar. So first off, it's Derman versus my Doom, and I try to take it out with a single Earthquake, but it doesn't quite kill because of the Intimidate. He then decides to swap out into Zweebuzz after hitting an Overheat. I decide to go into Mooman instead, and with just three Rock Slides, this bird goes down. He brings out my Doom again, and I'm not taking the risk of it outspeeding me, so I swap out into Jack and kill it with a Surf. Gothmoth then takes out Skevenant with a single beam because, I mean, it's four times weak to it. And the last Pokemon is Lucarock. Two more single beams and it's down and out. Let's move on over to Phoebe. Now it's Pump Dress time to shine. Shadow Balling, Karate Tomb, Kurt Growth, and I'm pretty happy I actually did kill this Pokemon because it looks cursed. A F. We didn't have to kill Drifflord, which I'm not too happy about, but a single Shadow Ball once again does the trick. Coffee Cham as well, and last but not least, Drag City. It manages to hit me first, but it only does about half, and I counter back, killing it. The next trainer was of course going to be Galatia, and she starts off with the Aura Queen, which we've got ourselves. Luckily, Gothmod can hit two Earthquakes to take it down as he sends out an Abominine. I go into Jag because it's Fire Ice and I Hydro Pump it. Once it's off the field, he brings in Bear Goro. So I swap out into Moo Man who gets hit with a Blizzard doing over half of my health, but I know I can outspeed and hit it with a Mega Horn to take it out. For Walkader, I went into Pungdra and for some reason, I went for Shadow Ball. It did just about half, but a Blizzard almost killed me together with the Sandstorm damage, leaving me with only 6 HP, so I brought in Speed Sonic after. Getting hit with another Blizzard and it once again doing more than half of my health but luckily our Dragon Claw is just enough to take it out as he goes into his final Pokemon Hack Slash. Since I don't really know if it can outspeed this thing I bring out Derman and kill it with an Outrage. And with Glacia down we only have one more trainer left before we can take on Wallace and that's Drake. With his Tyrant King against my Jack the battle starts off pretty roughly for him as I just kill him with a single Ice Beam. Drampound is a Pokemon we've already beaten in the past against Watson and he's not Getting a redemption arc right now, so another Ice Beam, another kill. Escanite then gives me some trouble as I decide to go into Goth Mod but get hit with a Mega Horn bringing me down to 35 HP. So I then go into Pump Drive predicting another Mega Horn but he goes for Outrage instead which once again is super effective and does more than half of my health. My own Escanite then Earthquakes it 3 times, finally takes it down but is also hit with some Outrages leaving me with 19 HP going into the next Pokemon, Lapple. So I bring in Speed Sonic, get hit with a Hydro Pump, counter back with the Dragon Claw and take it down. He then has a Go Dragon of his own, so I bring in Jack again. Since this thing is part Ghost type, I go for the crunch, almost take it out, but luckily our Sandstorm is still up and that wins us the battle. We all know what comes next. Let's see if Wallace is going to put a dent in our team or if we're just going to flawlessly kill him. First up is Kingster versus Pungdra. I start spamming Shadow Ball, 
And once I'm able to hit four of them because he decides to use a full restore, I finally get him down into red health. I then use a Dragomath to finish him off, but I've also taken quite a lot of damage from Hydro Pumps. Because this next Pokemon is a Garchine, I decide to go into Dermon because he can take Dragon-type moves pretty well. Sadly enough, this Garchine outsped me, which I didn't expect as I went for the Outrage. And since I'm stuck in Outrage, I can't swap out my Pokemon and I ultimately get taken down. So Speed Sonic has to come in and clean up with a Dragon Claw luckily enough because he managed to hit himself in his confusion. King Algae was no problem as a Dragon Claw manages to take it out as well, but I also got hit with another Hydro Pump. As it turns out, the Basculin that we got in the beginning had a third evolution, Basku Kingu. So one Dragon Claw later and I bring in Gothmoth to take a Water Spout pretty well and then take it out with Single Beam. Sarapex then comes out and I thought that it was a Poison Water type, it's a Grass Water type, and I went for Earthquake, which was not good. It barely did any damage and it left my Gothmoth with only 2 HP. I go into Jack, try to hit an Ice Beam, but it doesn't really do that much damage and a Giga Drain brings me down into red health as well. So Moo Man has to come and clean it up with a Mega Horn. And his last Pokemon, Licky Cash, also gets destroyed by two Mega Horns, but I was willing to sack Moo Man here, as we were super lucky that it didn't go for an attacking move. And with that, we have become champion of Pokemon Fusion 3, but we're not done yet. We aren't the champion until we've beaten the real champion, Steven Stone. Let's see what kind of team he's rolling with. A Rapid Knight as his first Pokemon, classic Steven with his Steel types. Jack is going to just Hydro Pump it and that is out of the way already. His Hellish Sharp also gets Hydro Pumped and, you know, I can't really say too much, down and out. Relimize shares the same faith as the last two, a Hydro Pump to the face. And we send it back to Ghostland. Crady Tomb and Arma Budops die to Surfs as well and he then has a Ray Tina of his own. I managed to freeze it on my first go with my Ice Beam and then hit it with another one but it doesn't quite take it out and he goes for a rest healing up. I then hit another Ice Beam and go for a Crunch lowering its special defense and once he uses a full restore we only need two more Crunches to take down Ray Tina. Man, Steven just is a joke in every single game if you have a water type on your team. He just can't deal with it. That means we're done with Pokemon Fusion 3. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought of the game. I definitely recommend checking it out. It's so good. And I would say is on par, if not better, than Fuse Dimensions. If you want me to do more challenges in this game, let me know in the comments down below. Or let me know what other game you want me to play. And before we end off the video, I want to thank my membership and Patreon supporters as always. A huge thank you for supporting the channel. If you want to do so yourself, you can click the links in the description. It is always appreciated, but not needed. With that out of the way, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwiggo, and I'll see you guys next time.